this capacitor here and uh, just see you know what we get just for giggles. As you can see here the uh, 0 0.06 microfarad uh, capacitor went on nice and neat. Again I used the uh, coil method and again I had this insulating material here. I pushed it back, did the coil method on the lead after uh, cleaning with uh, alcohol, make sure it had a great connection and then uh, coil method on this side. Uh, so we're looking good. You can tell this is not an original capacitor here. So I'll verify this uh, against the schematic as well. One thing to note too, this this was a, a 0 0.01 cap. The uh, schematic shows 0 0.02. I went on back with the uh, 0 0.01, uh, what was in there. So I uh, just wanted to make note of that. That's one of the uh, variations I've seen uh, thus far. So let me check this value here on the uh, schematic and get this unit out. And then again, um, just the way this is mounted, I'm going to probably just cut the leads uh, themselves and uh, try to route a new capacitor over here on this side against the uh, chassis. So um, let me get this one uh, dressed up here and I'll be right back. Okay, again, this capacitor is not an original. You can tell it's not in line with the uh, other uh, capacitors that are in, which are uh, made by solar. And uh, the value on this one's 0 0.01 microfarads. I'm looking at the schematic, and I'll show you guys where this is. Coming off the plate at the 6F5, it's this 0 0.02 microfarad. So I'll go back with a uh, 0 0.02 microfarad uh, cap right here. So um, here's what I've got. I think this capacitor is tied to the wrong location. Maybe not because it looked original, but I cannot uh, find it on the schematic. It seems odd. Um, anyway, I think the connection point should be uh, here. And I'll show you what I'm looking at on the schematic here. It would be the 25Z5 here, back down to here to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So I think really this is going to be a safety cap installation that I need to uh, tie in from here to ground. So I'm going to leave this out of the circuit for now and then uh, when we bring everything up we'll check it just to make certain that I'm uh, correct on my logic. Um, anyway, let me uh, just fire up my uh, uh, LCR meter and we'll take a look uh, real quick. You know, it's just some real simple tests on that uh, capacitor bank, these five microfarad see what we read there on those so again here's the uh, you know the question mark uh, more to come on that in just a bit so as you can see I'm trying to uh, get the capacitance value to uh, register here and uh, unsuccessful so far haven't been able to charge this one enough using my uh, multimeter to get a reading and again these uh, should be uh, five microfarad uh, ca capacitors let me look at the other side. See if we have any luck here. Yeah, reads 35. My guess is too, if I check resistance, I'm going to have, uh, you know, some DC resistance as well. I'm sure this thing's uh, had better days. Um, I think what I'll do, I wanted to keep that as original, but. Uh, I'll keep the box for now, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just bring this up, use a terminal strip back in this same location where this was mounted. I think I, uh, I'm going to have to uh, tack in a couple resistors, and i got to find another uh, rectifier tube too. I think I robbed Peter to pay Paul on this one. Took the uh, 25Z5 out of here and uh, threw it in at uh, American set from the 1930s. So uh, let me dig up another 25Z5, look at my uh, resistors and uh, tack a few things in, get these electrolytics put in, and then uh, we'll try to bring this thing up, see what happens. Okay, here's that solar paper electrolytic capacitor. Again, it's a dual can. They were five microfarads in value. 
and uh, you can see here I just went on and put uh, two uh, five microfarad uh, 50 volt caps in and I didn't even have to use a terminal strip here I just went back directly to the connection point on the uh, uh, 43 tube as well as the other tube I think it was a 6F5 and uh, just tied that back to ground and it was already a, a ground connection here so that worked out perfect left this one uh, stuffed in here and the only reason why again you got this whole ring around that and it holds this big power resistor dropping power resistor so um, this you know that's in use and uh, I think I'd create more damage uh, than good and again you can see I've got this stubbed up and I just demonstrated um, that should be a safety cap at that point and I'll install that uh, permanently and then again get my uh, resistors put in and I'll use this uh, back plane as a heat sink uh, most likely or mount a terminal strip and throw them between it so the uh, power resistors can breathe well um, then I've got to get my uh, mechanical assembly again back in here for the uh, dial indicator and kind of tune around see what the uh, tuning looks like then we'll do a full-blown alignment on the receiver should it need it and I believe it will uh, just based on the initial uh, plane of the receiver um, but good to get this thing going love these old radios and uh, this will be another uh, neat uh, radio project once complete Okay, I've got the uh, radio powered up down. You can see I got a couple jumpers in here, and the reason why I uh, ended up creating a uh, voltage dropping circuit. So I'll put a link to that in the video, and you guys can go back and look at it. But there's a modified ballast tube using a uh, power resistor and a uh, diode. So um, I've got this feeding over to a, I uh, know it's out of the camera view, but it's going to a, a resistor bank, about 85 ohms, and that feeds the uh, pilot lamps themselves for the dial. And I'm monitoring that voltage and current that, uh, again, you can hear the uh, radio uh, playing. And uh, one thing I did want to point out, the uh, speaker's torn, so there's some noise there, but if you go down here to the low end and you hear all this noise, um, I've got an LCD that backs up to the uh, shop, and I've got it unplugged right now because it creates all kinds of white noise. But uh, that capacitor, if it shows up uh, here, um, again, I was uh, kind of suspect of the uh, connectivity itself on where it was hooked up in the circuit. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to show a demonstration here. I've got a, a safety cap here um, that goes back to the chassis ground, and I'm going to attach it here. And you can just hear how much uh, that capacitor does to uh, taking a lot of that uh, noise and garbage down on the low end back to uh, ground. I'll turn this up some. Then I'll unhook it. So there's the difference. Again, the safety cap serves a couple different purposes, but you can see the impact that the uh, safety cap has there on, again, taking a lot of this uh, noise from the uh, power line side and just, uh, you know, push it to ground. So I'm going to just tune through the band just a little bit here, uh, just for demonstration purposes. Again, I've got the tuning assembly out of the radio right now. So I'm just tuning the uh, directly on the shaft of the uh, variable tuning condenser. 
And again, the speakers tour. So there's some uh, there's some repairs there that are going to be required to really clean up the audio. So you'll hear a little bit of distortion from the speaker for sure as I uh, just tune through. I haven't done a RF alignment on the radio. There you hear some of the distortion from the speaker rattling because again the uh, speaker cone itself is uh, fractured. So uh, let me uh, switch over here to one of the short wave bands and see if we can uh, pull in anything uh, this afternoon.